Florida Crossroads explores our state through its people, places, and events, and is made possible in part by funding from the Florida Department of Education. This old river takes many twists and turns through the middle of Florida. The Akluwaha even became a favorite tourist attraction for curious northerners. But the tour boats quit using the river a century ago, and now a large dam holds back the river's water. But some folks are calling for a return of the free-flowing Akluwaha. In this edition of Florida Crossroads, we'll dive into the arguments for and against removing the dam on the Akluwaha. Artists have written dramatic folk songs about what happened to the river. The Ocklawaha River ran 10,000 years to a peaceful land From the St. John's River to the Silver Springs Snakes and the alligators ruled as kings Pushing down the trees and digging up the muck A D9 dozer and a 10-ton truck Building up a dam just to make a big pool Where the cypress sighs and the scrub jay sings I worked all summer on the Rodman Dam The job's not done, but I damn sure am The water's gonna rise and the river's gonna die So we can watch that Texas oil flow by If we don't do something dramatically now, we're going to see the potential total collapse of the St. John's because it depends on that submerged vegetation as well as submerged trees. Once it's gone and you start seeing the negative effects in the St. John's River, what are you going to do? You say, oh, I'm sorry, we were wrong. I'm not willing to take that gamble. It's also like a Rubik's Cube. It's a conundrum. It's, 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 it's a puzzle. And, and, so, and, they, and both sides try to figure out the puzzle on how to get the upper hand. Peacefully flowing through central Florida is the Oklawaha River. It starts at the Harris Chain of Lakes by Leesburg and flows north out of Lake County. As it moves north through Marion County, it picks up spring water from the Silver River before going east across Putnam County and emptying into the St. Johns River. The National Archives has a 100-year-old film of the steamboats that used the river. In the late 1800s, tourists would go up and down the river en route to Silver Springs, giving northerners the chance to take in the exotic wildlife unimaginable to them. As tourists took interest in other parts of Florida, most folks forgot about the Oklawaha until it became part of a plan to dig a barge canal across the state. In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson came to Putnam County to blast the dirt from the ground to kick off the canal and symbolize progress. When operative, just a few years from now, the canal will situate Florida on the main street of America's inland waterways. Florida will be in the most strategic area on 2,460 miles of connected waterways for barge transport between the eastern seaboard and the mid-continental United States. Work began on the western and eastern sides of the canal and a dam went up on the Oklawaha River, creating the Rodman Reservoir. The reservoir replaced a forest. Many of the trees had been mowed down by a giant machine called the Crusher, which smashed the trees into the mud below. More than 50 years later, some of the trees that died long ago have washed all the way to the spillway along the dam. Back in the late 60s, a group of environmentalists led by Marjorie Harris Carr fought to stop the canal. Trying to prevent, first trying to prevent the destruction of the Oklahoma River. It is so beautiful. Uh, it is uh, so unique. Uh, and it was so needlessly destroyed that we worked so hard to prevent that. Progress on the 107-mile canal was slow, and it was clear that barge traffic would be limited with a new interstate highway system making trucking a better option to move goods from state to state. And so the federal government stopped work on the barge canal, but the lake behind the Rodman Dam was already in place. And near that dam was a six-mile canal cut through the dirt with a functioning lock. There's even a bridge over that waterway with a sign that says Cross Florida Barge Canal, even though there is no such canal across Florida. In the 90s, the legislature renamed the dam after Senator George Kirkpatrick, although locals still mostly call it the Rodman Dam. And the Rodman Reservoir, also called Lake Oklawaha, was a bass fisherman's paradise. 
It's now part of the Cross Florida Greenway, a 110 mile natural area owned by the state on land once designated for the Cross Florida Barge Canal. But some of those who want the state to remove the dam remember fishing on the Ocklawaha River. There's stories of people who, who lived here before the dam was built who they could go out on the river for an hour, like uh, upstream, catch 20 fish in an hour's fishing of striped bass and feed a huge picnic of friends and family member, you know, the same day. You go up the Alcawaha back then, the water was so clear and, and, uh, and all, and uh, I, my dad would be on the back sculling the, the boat and I'd be on the front fly fishing and you could actually see the size of the fish that you were going to catch. And so if it was a tiny one, you just pull the fly away, you know, and go back in for, for a larger fish. So. Fish would migrate from the Atlantic through the St. John's into the Ocklawaha. Is how unique was it? Because natural run of stripers used to come up here. Green eels, natural run of eels, shad, all used to come up here. They can't get up here anymore. They would get up as far as Silver Springs and and they would spawn up there and the eggs would, the fertilized eggs would would start traveling downstream in the, just in the current and hatch out and you'd have hatchlings in the river and eventually those, as they grow up, they go out and into, out into the ocean to live a good part of their life cycle in the ocean before coming back again to, to spawn. Those who want the dam gone say removing the dam would allow the old migration patterns to resume. Manatee could also go upstream without having to use the St. John's Lock. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection keeps count of the manatees passing through. They do manage that at the lock and they see how many come in, how many leave out. They take pictures of the pods of them, um, how many babies were born within a, within a time frame. Uh, so they, they know that. But I've actually been at the lock and, and one of the most amazing things is, you know, th these guys are manning the lock, for lack of a better term, you know. And uh, man, this manatee's up there and starts pounding on the lock doors and they open the lock and the manatee goes through the lock and cavorts in there for a while and then, oh, then goes to the other end, they open it up and it goes back out. The manatees that make it into the reservoir have plenty to eat and don't have to fight the cold in winter. They eat the water lettuce, the eel grass that grows. Uh, they hang around the springs where uh, the springs are still out there and they can get warm there around that water. So it's a natural environment for them to come into and, and be a part of. A not so natural environment by the spillway has drawn crowds ever since the Rodman Dam was finished in 1968. It's hard to find a better spot to throw a line in the water. The folks around here all know this is an excellent fishing spot. Why? Well, the fish swim upstream until they hit the dam, which is the end of the line, unless they end up on the line of an angler. There are a lot of people that fish for sustenance. You know, again, being a very poor county, there are a lot of people that fish out there, so they got something to eat. You know, it's not like they eat fish every day, but it is a major contributor to their diet, and that's an easy access point. You don't have to have a boat. At times there are two and three hundred people taking advantage of this resource, and those people are at the mid to lower socioeconomic level. Even though folks could still come and fish the river if the Kirkpatrick Dam went away, proponents of the dam say it wouldn't be the same. They also point to a new ecosystem surrounding Lake Oklahoma that would be lost. I'm in marvel of it when I come out here. I think it just looks like a pristine area to me. Uh, surely there's a there's man-made structures here, but I believe the earth has healed itself, if you will, to this. And the wildlife has gotten used to it, and it's part of what they what they were born in. So it's nothing that would impede any animal. I think the wildlife and all the, all the surrounding wetlands have just flourished over the past many, many years after all this destruction took place. As we set up for an interview near the dam, a group of turkeys wandered by, almost on cue. There is a large contingent of people who think the dam should be removed that have never been here, that have never seen what's out here, never seen the ecosystems that have evolved in the 50 years. All they hear is about a weed choked environment that bass 
fishermen with their fifty or sixty thousand dollar boats are out here, and that's the only reason we keep it. It's just not the case. And it traps the um, natural flow of fresh water. It gets murkier, it gets cloudier, it gets warmer in the summertime. And so by the time the water comes out of the dam, the water quality is not as good as, and as natural as it should be. Sam Carr, no relation to Marjorie Harris Carr, has boyhood memories of the St. Johns River different from what he sees today. It's not like it used to be. The fishing is not like it used to be. I went out the other day and beautiful day, had the tide right and everything. I caught one small bass, that was it. Nothing on the fly rod. I didn't see any alligators. I didn't see any manatees. I didn't see any eel grass. I didn't see any hyacinths. I didn't see any, you know, any of the stuff that helps the river be clean is not there. The river's darker now than it used to be. And again, where does it get its clear water? From rainfall and that river. He says there's less eel grass in the St. John's since it doesn't get the cool spring water from the Ocklawaha. Well, the eel grass is where the fish live, number one. Number two, it, it, it was along the entire St. John's River from Jacksonville all the way through Lake George and, and the whole deal. I mean, it was both, and it, you know, anywhere it was four feet of water, there was eel grass and it was all aligned along the river. It was, at the time, it seemed like a pain in the butt until it's gone. But that's also where the bass breed and, uh, and all of that. There's no grass, there's no bass, and so we really want to make sure that habitat is there. You know, the, the manatee is also called a sea cow. Well, for a really good reason, because they graze. And, um, and I can remember sitting with my, my neighbors in our backyard watching a family of, of manatees come in and just absolutely graze for a long period of time and clear out all the eel grass around your, your dock. I mean, they would do that. That's what they feed, they feed on. But, um, you know, now the manatees are literally going up these creeks and the side creeks and everything and eating branches. In order to keep weeds down and boats from getting stuck, parts of the reservoir are sprayed with herbicides by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. And so there's heavy herbicide spraying to try to deal with the invasive plants, and that just adds insult to injury to the downstream grasses that are disappearing. And so by having a free-flowing river with a breach, it improves water quality, so we should see less of those invasive plants and less spraying that does damage downstream. Drawdowns are another more natural method used to kill off the aquatic plants. The Department of Environmental Protection drops the water level down to 11 feet and the plants dry out. However, the outflow into the river changes. The Robin Pool is not a natural lake. If it functioned as a natural system, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, it's never functioned like a natural lake. Every three to four years, it has to be drained and cleaned out like a fishbowl. And every time they do that, it causes significant harm to the St. Johns River because you have a pulse of the muck and the bad things that are kept behind the dam, as well as when they fill it back up um, after the drawdown, there's a significant saltwater wedge coming up the St. Johns River system that causes harm. The less fresh water flowing downstream, the more salt water from the Atlantic creeps into the Florida interior. The St. Johns River Keeper says with the salinity of the St. Johns rising, trees along the banks have died in Duval County. She also says sea level rise adds to the salinity of the St. Johns River. Another concern of the River Keeper, evaporation in the reservoir. She says studies point to 150 million gallons a day evaporating out of the reservoir that could flow into the St. Johns. And then that robs the St. Johns River of much water, much needed spring water during times of drought. Others call that number inflated. The number that they throw out is based on a formula that is using the most extreme numbers. Is it sunny? Is there no wind? Is there no cloud cover? Is there no vegetative cover? So those numbers are suspect to start with, but even so, the numbers, the, the volume of water that you're talking about is insignificant when you look at the picture of the St. Johns River. But then what happens in Florida is a really cool thing called clouds, and all that evaporation goes up into a cloud, and then it rains down and back on the land, and it goes back through the filtering of the land, 
into the aquifer and starts the path all over again. Members of Save Rodman Reservoir say the lake behind the dam actually benefits the St. Johns River. That's because all the harmful nutrients that flow into the lake from Alachua, Marion, and Putnam counties get filtered out by the lake's vegetation. You know, the nutrient reduction is a big thing, especially when you look at the St. Johns River that's already impacted, that has algae blooms on a regular basis. Those nutrients feed the algae blooms. You know, the worst thing is water runoff, and that's the worst thing we can do. If we can hold back that water for any period of time, we win. There are designated points in the reservoir that we take water samples, and they look for chlorophyll, um, phosphorus, and nitrogen. The plant growth, the floating vegetation, is significant in absorbing that. The question is, do you want to do all the destruction that it would take to, to remove the dam, have nutrients flow down the to the St. John's and have this decaying vegetation for a long, long time. Do you want to do that? The dam itself is not what it used to be, completed more than 50 years ago. An engineer's report released in 2022 found a few areas of concern, much of it focused on a pileup of logs near the spillway. The logs limit water flow and engineers said they should be cleared. The report did not find any major structural issues. Some parts were corroded and needed to be sandblasted. You know, you don't drive your car for 50 years without changing tires and the oil and doing the maintenance on it. And that's exactly where we're at. It's at the point where it needs maintenance. However, the engineering firm classified their Kirkpatrick Dam as a high hazard dam. That was based on the potential harm downstream if a failure did occur. It did clearly specify that it is a high hazard dam. And that the threshold to go to high is people are going to die. High Die. They run. They go together. The state did finally admit it is a high hazard dam. There's about 500 plus properties, homes, businesses downstream that are in harm's way if there's an unexpected collapse. Downstream from the dam and across the St. John's River is the town of Wilaka. Some parts are low lying and already flood in storms like Hurricane Ian. Because the harbor area of our town, and part of it's in the county, but part of it is in the town, is the lowest, is extremely low. Uh, it floods in Nor'easters, it flooded in Irma, terribly. So it wouldn't take a whole lot to put most of that underwater. Somewhere along the line, you're gonna have to do something about the dam. And so what do you do? Do you, do you repair the dam or do you, you know, restore the old river channel? If the dam stays for the long term, some locals point to other potential benefits to the community like electricity. And I would love to see us even look at maybe making renewable energy out of that dam being hydroelectric and start serving the community of Wallach and some of those areas with it. Then there are the free flowing wells like this one in the area. No pump is needed for the water to flow. Supporters of the reservoir say the lake brings up the water table and makes it easier for some residents to have fresh groundwater available. Florida defenders of the environment call the change in the water table insignificant. There is essentially no perceptible differences in wells that were immediately adjacent to the reservoir. They also say at a time when Florida's population grows by the thousands every week, it doesn't make sense to eliminate a fresh water resource. And you've got other communities that are, are wanting to pump out of the St. Johns River. And we're not able, we don't need to do that. We have the reservoir, Lake Oklawaha, sitting right here that has the ability that if we ever need it, and believe me, when there's a drought, you know, you're looking for water at that point. The Putnam County Chamber of Commerce considers the reservoir an important part of the local economy. It attracts people nationwide and worldwide for the fishing. Well, I think our fishing is top notch here. Um, truly, we got some of the best fisheries out here. You can catch all kinds of bass, uh, brim, striped bass, you name it, you can catch it out here. And there's tilapia, which are invasive, but they're abundant. Uh, catfish, bass, brim, any kind of panfish you want, speck. I've caught some big speck under the dock on the, on the east side of the spillway. Um, and speckled perch, and there, that's as good of eating as there is. Supporters of the reservoir say the environmental groups have an inconsistency, and it's right there on the other side of the state at the Withlacoochee River on the Gulf Coast. 
Work on the Cross Florida Barge Canal took place there too, with a dam, a lock, and a lake, Lake Rousseau. But there's no push for a free-flowing Withlacoochee. Because we would say, hey, if you're going to do it, let's, let's take them both down. And you won't because Lake Rousseau has been around since the turn of the century. It was, it, it, the Lake Rousseau um, predated um, the, the Cross Florida Barge Canal. And so people lived around there and there was property there. And, but, it, but it also had a, you know, what's the difference? Well, you have the Withlacoochee. That's not as Yaklawaha. I mean, there were mirror images that did the exact same thing. It's just the, the Oklawaha, there was more people that were emotionally attached to it than the Withlacoochee. But others say the two rivers don't compare, in part since the Oklawaha is part of the larger St. John's River system. So you're, you're talking about a much larger watershed where I think there's more at stake. You know, Withlacoochee, much less unspoiled because of um, phosphate mining in the late 19th century. It's a little uh, less natural. The Withlacoochee was first dammed in 1909 to provide hydroelectric power to local mining operations, and so Lake Rousseau has been around for generations. Back east, Florida defenders of the environment got UF students to draw sketches of what a new nature park could look like along a free-flowing Oklawaha River. They say the area could still attract many anglers, especially if boat ramps were added along the St. Johns River. What's going to help the economy in Putnam County more? Is it keeping it like it is or restoring the Oklahoma with all these new amenities and new boat ramps? By breaching the Rodman Dam, there are statewide, definitely regional benefits. Um, you can't look at this system in isolation. You have to look at the natural connection between the Silver Springs, Silver River, the Oklahoma, and the St. Johns. When the water levels go all the way down, what happens is that original floodplain will, will revegetate around the, the river channel and on the sides of the floodplain. That'll stabilize those organic muck soils the same kind of soils that we'd look if we just walked over here onto this island over here. Those are organ largely organic soils over there that have built up over many, many years, thousands of years. The debate surrounding the fate of the dam has raged since before it was even finished more than 50 years ago. It was a story where they had taken away something from the environment. And as we move forward and as we grew older, we were always going to remember that that had to be restored. And so that's how big it was. When I first came here, I said, oh, we got we to gotta, you know, breach it and we got to restore the river. But then in my middle years of my career, I could see how much the people enjoyed it. I said, I'll leave it alone. But for about the last 20, 25 years, I'm firmly in the camp that we need to restore the river. And part of that is my experiences of having traveled around the state on different details with FWC and seeing just all the destruction that we have wreaked, humans have wreaked, on, on our natural resources, the environment. Now, we have man manipulated Florida a lot, if you look at it, okay? So, so it was manipulated, but it's bounced back and it's recreated itself. And that's what we want to see. So, not everybody, <clears throat> not every area in Florida has done that. A few activists like Whitey Markle have lamented the loss of the river in song. He wrote one called, Hold Back the Waters. I guess I'll just evaporate and return to the air. I might be a cloud in the heaven up there. I might just end up a nice foggy dew, my swamps disappearing, and I am too. I was the old Oklahoma. Our story is a lot tougher to begin with. Well, you know, they they blew up this, the, 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 you know, they, they blew up this dynamite. And da, 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 da. That's how our story starts. Their story always starts with, you know, like a man, like a guitar playing or mandolin, and the, the yeah. and so they, they, it's easier for them to track folks. It's also a debate that has proven to be divisive through the years. Fisherman Ben Williams wants the river restored, and to hear less rhetoric. It is more divisive than it needs to be. And it is as divisive as it is because we have folks that are constantly screaming, do it now, 
that have addressed this issue the way so many of the political issues in this country get addressed. And they've gone and painted the people that are seeing a slightly different vision, that grew up living a different life, that have had this as part of their life all their lives. They are painting them as evil, as wrong, as despicable, whatever word, adjective you want to throw at them. And that's a perfect way to harden people's hearts. And, and when, when you, how do you compromise with somebody that's, that views you that way? That there's a lot of emotion tied to being environmentally proactive. And so people can feel good about something that they don't have a complete knowledge of. And, I, and I've heard numerous discussions from everybody you can imagine. I mean, I was a game warden here in Putnam County for 13 years war patrol and later as a supervisor on land patrol. And, um, and if somehow it's, it's falling uh, to a point where it's an, everybody is an either or, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're rooted very strongly one side or the other. Is that we in our lifetime will be able to see the benefits of the clearer, cooler, fresher water flowing into the St. John's, fueling the productivity of the estuary and opening up important his historic fish migratory patterns all the way up into Silver Springs. Our grandkids will be arguing about this one because the dam will always be there and the Akawa will be there. So it's not like they're not, neither one of them are going away. I was a poor I was a poor old Akloaha.